Hello, my fellow lovesick latibulators. I'm Mr. Church, and I've always wanted to try doing a naked build because I hate wearing pants, and also I thought the challenge would be fun to see how tanky you could make it without wearing any armor or, of course, pants. Very important. And given that it's February and, uh, you know, love is in the air and such like that, I thought it would be fun to do a Cupid build. So, uh, with helps from Vapid Valentine to make me look so beautiful, uh, I decided to put on my halo and don my wings, they got clipped off, I don't have them anymore, and make a beautiful Cupid build. So we're going to be using the two weapons from the Tunnel of Love event, and that means we're using this bow, the Burning Love. And this unfortunately is an Assassin's uh, bow, and we can't re-roll it like uh, all the other fun, like the Holy Fire and stuff like that. Uh, but luckily we do have damage resistance while aiming, and that's going to come in handy, I'll show in a bit. Uh, importantly with the Burning Love, it comes with a burning, uh, effect that's standard to the bow. So you can actually add the Burning Arrow and it'll double the burn damage. Uh, but that doesn't really seem to do a whole lot, so I added instead the Plasma Arrows, uh, which is the maximum amount of damage you can squeeze out of it. In tradition, Cupid has the Gold-Tipped Arrow, which he shoots at people and makes them fall madly in love. Uh, but he also, some people don't realize, had a lead-tipped arrow, which he shot at people, and it would have the opposite effect. So for that, we're going to be using the love tap, of course the lead-tipped arrow being the bullets that come out of the weapon. Haha, <laughs> very funny. Now the love tap is going to be our, our weapon to use in more serious situations, because it is a vampire's weapon, so it's going to really help us stay alive. So the mods I'm using are the armor-piercing barrel, uh, which gives us the uh, armor penetration and the short light barrel full stock, large quick adjempt uh, drum, and the reflex light and the compensator. With this uh, combination of mods, and I know I said armor piercing barrel when it's actually armor piercing receiver, but I was hoping if we moved on quickly you wouldn't notice, but it's just bothering me that I never corrected myself, so there we are with that one. But uh, with the um, submachine gun, if you have this selection of uh, mods, it'll just go up and down. Normally the recoil will pull like that, this to the left and right, but with this one it just goes up and down so you can control that recoil better and that's going to be important because uh, I don't really want to use vats with this weapon because it'll chew up my AP and I don't have a ton of AP because I can't wear any armor and that's where a lot of my AP regen usually comes from. One of the, in oh that's my pit boy right there. One of the cool things about the bow that'll kind of compensate for the fact that it's not Vampire's weapon is it does give 50 damage resist while aiming. Right now we have 233 damage resistance. There, I saw it for a second, 283. There it is again, 283. So while we're zoomed in, we actually have a lot more tankiness there. Uh, so it'll help a little bit. I'm mostly going to be using the bow on smaller, squishy stuff. One of the cool things about these weapons is they are free. You can get them from doing the Tunnel of Love event, uh, which is here at Nuka World on tour. I'm standing right in front of the door. With this build, I'm going to be switching the bow and the machine gun back and forth. So the only things you'll have to switch out for that are the bow perks with the... Uh, commando perks. And as you can see, the bow perks actually not only buff the damage of the arrow, but also the plasma damage and the burn damage, which is pretty cool. That's a new feature that they added recently. Uh, so that's cool. It makes it a lot more, more better. And I'm going to take this blue screen to uh, give a big shout out to my patrons and channel members for your support. I really appreciate it. It really does help a lot. And if you're looking for uh, ways to support me, that is the best way. The link for that will be in the description if you're interested. Let's look at the build here. I have Traveling Pharmacy, and this will reduce the weight of chems. And this is important because I'm going to be using Born Survivor, First Aid, and Field Surgeon as a three-card combo. So essentially what's going to happen is... Uh, and also I'm using uh, only super stims, okay? So when Born Survivor procs, when my health falls below 40%, it'll pop a stim pack because I only have super stims. It'll pop the super stim, which will restore 45% more health and work more quickly because of Field Surgeon. And of course, super stims are 100 pounds, so Traveling Pharmacy will help me be able to walk a little bit. And I'm also going to be running batteries included in Bandolier, uh, because of the carry weight issues that I always have. 
Uh, I forgot to mention I'm running Legendary Strength, Agility, Intelligence, and Endurance. And um, the most important card for this build, in my opinion, is what rads. If you're running a high health build, this is a super easy way to stay uh, at full health. You never realize how much your rads build up over time. And this just removes them all the time, always, even in combat. So good. Yummy, yummy, yummy in my tummy. Uh, electric Absorption does not matter for this build, but there's not really any other legendary card that would, unless it was another, like, a legendary perk card, which I didn't have the, the coins to upgrade. Let's look also now, how are we going to stay alive? Ironclad will give us 50 damage and energy resistance uh, just for, for no reason. And because we have zero armor, these cards are going to be our armor. So, uh, Ironclad... And um, also evasive is going to be a similar thing with agility. Um, this gives us max 45 damage and energy resistance. So we're at 95 right there. Uh, I have max agility, so that's maxed out. Normally, I recommend not wearing these cards because uh, you're going to get diminishing returns. Again, bodyguards. If we stay on a full team, we'll get that max 36. And that's all going to add up, and that's going to essentially be our armor because we can't wear armor because we're nudists, okay? Normally, like I said, I don't recommend running these cards, but this is the only way I'm getting damage and energy, energy resistance, so uh, I will be running these cards. Again, I talked about the commando cards over here in the tank killer. We also have blocker, which is going to reduce... Uh, melee damage. This is actually a really powerful card. A lot of massive beasts have a powerful melee attack, like the Scorch Beast Queen, and that really does reduce the damage. And now Ricochet helps with the ranged attacks. And because uh, we're running the Love Tap, this actually uh, procs the Vampire's health regen whenever it goes off. So it actually will heal you while you're getting shot. You can see my health right there going down and then whenever that goes off the vampire health regen makes it go back up so that's really powerful and that's why we're going to be running the love tap in sketchy situations because that's going to really help keep us alive a lot more better -er. now of course we're going to be running starch jeans and class freak because uh especially class freak that's going to be important now i also want to talk about uh nocturnal fortitude uh you gain 40 max health at night this is just going to make you a lot more tanky half the time. Chem Fiend, because I'm going to be running with some Psycho Buff in the really sketchy situations. That'll make it last longer. It'll also be relevant in Nuke Zones I'll show later. Uh, and of course, uh, you can't go anywhere without Adamantium Skeleton, am I right? Now this is so good for this build. Uh, limb damage is a huge way that you get fucked up and... I don't really want to get fucked up, especially during this lovely season of love and hearts and getting rejected. Rejuvenated uh, is going to help us out in a couple of ways. First, our AP, but also it's going to give us max HP of 45 right there. But as I said, AP regen, 45, plus one endurance is also more health. But the AP regen is super important for this build because one of the best ways to absorb damage with your build is with dodgy uh, because it avoids it, but it costs action points. And like I mentioned before, because I can't run armor with AP regen, uh, it, that's going to really suck our AP away, and that's not anything you ever want to happen because uh, you can't run away, dodgy won't proc anymore, you can't use vats, etc., etc. We also are running Action Boy with that, which will give us the 45% faster AP regen. And with Rejuvenated, uh, buffing our Well Hydrated, we're going to get another 45% um, AP regen from that. So that essentially is like a second action boy uh, just for staying hydrated, which is super easy to do because I have 400 purified water. So this is really important. It's still not going to get us up to f like 5 AP regen pieces of armor, but uh, we have another way that we're going to get AP, and that's with Company T. Now, this gives us 25 AP regen with Herbivore Mutation, which is super good. Um, but if you take a Live and Love 3, that'll buff that up to 37% AP regen for an hour. And Company T is super good because 
It's a really powerful food buff, and you can get it from your camp. Stranger Numbers is super important. I run this on every build. Please run this on every build and stay on a team. Suppressor? Uh, this one is just kind of a throwaway slot. You know, you can reduce their damage to you, or, you know, if you want, you could also run Healing Hands if you hate bloody builds and you want to fuck them over. I like to also uh, run, uh, also another funny thing you could run, Quack Surgeon, so that when you regen people, they come back with 1 HP. You know, if you happen to be an asshole, that's something you could do. Uh, and also, you know, just fuck those guys. Bloody builds are crap. Let's run a rad sponge and share it so that everyone's rads go away. And because they're dumb. I hate them. Why do they get to have all the rads? Bloody builds are stupid. Well, those guys are dumb. You can tell I've been reading Reddit lately and the comments have really been enlightening. One thing I didn't mention, through hiker. Uh, we're going to be running a lot of food buffs. So this will be nice. But if you have, you know, 200... 50 uh, nuka coals that might also help with that carry weight as well. Now, something I want to talk about is really interesting. Invisibility is you're invisible or you're not. So, the way that Strange in Numbers buffs Chameleon is by giving you 50 damage resistance when the effect happens. So, as you can see, there's no damage resist when I'm off the team because it gives my, my uh, Chameleon 25% strength. Uh, the only way you could really uh, you know, buff invisibility is by adding another effect to it, which is why you get this random 50 damage resistance. Uh, it is 50 damage resistance while stationary, um, and you have to be unarmored or have the weightless armor on. So, you know, I'm naked. This is a great perk for us. Uh, and so as you can see, we get that damage resist as soon as we join the team. And if you want to see how much that is, let me put my weapon away. And you'll see that I have uh, 181 damage resistance right now. And then when I pull it out, 221. So that's 50 damage resistance that we get uh, just from uh, grabbing our little armor. But also the other mutations we're running, Bird Bones for the agility. That helps us with our AP. We have Eagle Eyes for crit damage. That's not really going to come in huge handy. Egghead is not good for this build. Uh, in fact, it's bad. It gives us minus endurance. You don't need to run that. Grounded is very good for this build because it gives us 125 energy resistance, which is going to buff us immensely. Uh, healing factor is really good, but it does make your stim packs less effective. Uh, so it's sometimes good to run healing factor, like to take one to mitigate those effects. Herbivore, very important. I'll talk about food buffs later. Herd mentality. Uh, run this on every build, stay on a team even if it's by yourself, and you'll get plus three specials. Carry weight, of course, marsupial, and the jump height, blah blah blah. Scaly skin, though, is also another really important one for the 62 damage and energy resistance. And with class freak, it's only minus 12 AP. Um, and because basically uh, eagle eyes more than makes up for that ne negative AP uh, with giving us those plus five agility. Now, there is one more way that I'm going to grab more armor, and that is with backpacks. So, you, there's two options. You could do the insulated backpack, which will give you 90 damage resistance. Well, actually, 90 energy resistance. Um, but you could also run with the armor-plated backpack, which is, for some idiotic reason, under the armor tab. Even though the lead-lined and the insulated are under apparel, that's really fucking annoying because I always accidentally scrap it. But yes, the armor-plated backpack gives you 90 damage resist, and the insulated one gives you 90 energy resistance. So, because uh, because I'm running with grounded for that extra energy resistance, I'm going to run with the armor-plated, which will help bring my damage resistance up to a, a, a similar amount. As you can see, we're pretty well balanced right here. If I put on the insulated, you have a ton of energy resistance. That was good a few months ago when energy uh, damage was bugged out. But if you're looking for where to get these mods, go to the Pioneer Scout camp, not the lookout. There's a possum vending machine here. There's a tadpole one right there. But uh, this is where you can turn in your um, little badges and you can buy these mods. You can also get these mods at the um, Campfire Tales. And there is a vending machine there as well. Uh, but there's, there's the lead-lined one and the refrigerated one. Uh, but there's also uh, armor-plated. 
And the thing it tells you on the screen is completely incorrect. It says minus five carry weight. What the fuck is that? That doesn't actually, that's not what it gives you. Uh, as I showed earlier, uh, what it actually gives you is 90 uh, damage resistance. And this is incorrect as well. This says it gives you 15 energy resistance, which is bullshit as well. If you look at what it actually does, this gives you uh, 90 energy resistance, but it only gives you 30 carry weight or 60 carry weight minus 30 carry weight <laughs> instead of just get, telling us that it gives us 30 carry weight. Okay, so... Um, you do have way less carry weight with the with this, which is a, a problem if you have 295 Nuka Colas on you. Luckily, I don't. That was somebody else. Uh, you could run with the insulated if you feel the energy damage is what's killing you more. But I'm gonna be running with armor plated, uh, which is gonna keep me pretty tanky. As you can see, this is a Annihilator Sentry bot, and I'm just gonna stand here and see what he can do. As you can see, the love tap with that ricochet going off is healing me more than what damage I'm taking between ricochet, dodgy, and then all my damage resistance buffs. Uh, and right now I don't have any like food buffs going at all. Uh, this is just, you know, logging on, taking my pants off and running around. Also, these things used to be pretty, uh, pretty tough. They did just nerf them a little bit. But as you can see, they're still, you know, absolutely useless. They can't even kill someone in their undies. So, as I said earlier, it's really good to use the bow loadout uh, on human beings. I mean, that's the, the kind of things you're going to want to be making fall in love anyway. Like, I'm not a big fan of bestiality as, as much as you may think. And by the way, it is pronounced bestiality, not bestiality. Uh, that's something you could look at in the dictionary if you're confused about it. I wouldn't recommend using the word too much. But one thing that I did notice is you will have to wait a little bit sometimes for the one shot to kick in. But it will kick in because the flame damage will register. It'll just be registering a little bit late. As you can see, I took one arrow and all these guys died from the flames of Mordor or whatever. I don't know. Um, but yeah, feral ghouls, scorched. Uh, they can all eat shit. Human beings, they also take more damage because it's an assassin's bow. Uh, so it's always good to give them the love of the season. Um, and then save your the lead bullet tipped one for beasts of this world. Uh, so I wanted to see like if I could frontline a big old uh, queen fight. And luckily someone random dropped a nuke. And uh, let's see. how. Hello? There we go. I thought, let's let's try it out, so I ran out here in my tidy whities You can see there's no brown stripe up my back, so that's that's a plus, first of all. As you can see, uh, be because of the what rads, all the radiation I'm getting from the beast is actually getting wiped away immediately. And then all the damage I'm receiving, I can just immediately get back. I pretty much stayed at full health staying here. Now, a big test was I wanted to see if I could tank all three pylons at Encrypted. Um, and, uh, well, first of all, took a little bit to get started. It's good to wait around till other people show up, um, unless you didn't start the event. Like, if you didn't use the keycard, make sure you go in and start the event before anyone's ready, you know, since you didn't do anything and it's not your stuff. That's always nice. That's always a nice thing to do. So as we waited for it to happen, I then tried to take all the pylons. Now I have to admit, King Elgon or Eg Eglon uh, kept trying to take the pylons, and I wanted to take all of them because I'm selfish and greedy, and also for the video. Now you did maybe see my health just drop really scarily low right there, and that is uh, unfortunate. There is a little bit of lag when you have a ton of creatures like this all in one spot. And so I was a little bit concerned about that, so you will see me stimming myself quite a bit. Uh, he just took it again, as you can see, but he only lasts about one, two, three, four, five, dead. And I'll try taking it now uh, and see what I can do with the power of the tidy whities. And if you're watching this, uh, uh, King Eglon or whatever your name is, uh, you did a great job. You did a great job there, Skippy. Um, I think that... You know, it just probably wasn't your day. It was probably the lag, actually. But no, uh, it's just that <clears throat> I wanted to uh, just make sure that other people could get tags on the beast. So I wasn't really focusing on it a ton. 
Uh, I don't really do a ton of damage with this build. It's more just uh, for, you know, being a tank, ironically. Um, so, if you may, you may not know, but when you uh, tank the pylons, you take increased damage from everything, and you also take, like, 10 damage, uh, 10 HP per second of damage, and it stacks. So, if you are tanking all three of them, you're taking 30 damage per second. 30 HP a second is being removed from your body. So, having a massive pool of HP helps. Um, and I also want to add that I'm not using any food buffs for this fight, uh, except for canned coffee and company tea. Those are AP buffs. My health did get scarily low there again. Now, Born Survivor is proccing, and then my, uh, my health immediately goes back up because of those super stims, uh, in this, in the field surgeon and, uh, all that. But I still am stimming myself because of that lag. I'm a little bit of, uh, scared to just let it go, you know? But as I said, I'm only taking AP buffs. That's just uh, mostly because I was trying to, like, VAT stuff. And I didn't want to run out of AP for dodgy. Um, normally, I don't bother VATSing with this weapon because it chews through my AP so fast. But at a, an event like this, it was really important that I was continuously doing damage to stuff. So that the Vampire's Effect would continue to proc over and over. I also wanted to do some, you know, clear out some of these mobs because I felt like it was getting laggy and there was just a lot going on and it was kind of distracting and making it hard for me to focus on my meditations. So I was wiping out a lot of these things. I tried to help King Eglon, but he was already he was already dead by the time I got there. Um, and it was kind of like a theme of the fight, and I felt kind of bad because, well, I knew that there's a lot of shame when you see someone naked running around with more power in their belly than you have. So, you know, uh, if you're watching this, King Eglon, just keep uh, grinding at the bit, or what do they say? Just keep, you're doing great. You're doing great. Um, just maybe fix your armor. I don't know. Um, so, uh, I tried to wipe out the eye bombs before they could get into our lips, because when they blow up, they ruin my life. But, as you can see, um, I was tanky at pretty good. There were some times when the, the health did drop down a little bit. Um, like, probably down to, like, where I had, like, 35 H, uh, percent HP or something. Um, so that was pretty sketchy. Um, and there was this time when it did try to face fuck me with its face fuck attack. That was horrifying. Um, but I actually was fine then, too. Uh, just eating the coffee, drinking that stuff. Uh, but it was actually good right here. Yeah, that scared me a little bit. But I was fine, honestly. Like, the, the super stems can power through that. We killed it. And I got, of course, another white wolf fedora. That's so good. Add that to my fucking collection. Glad I did that. It, it was also pretty good in the daily ops. Uh, I felt like, you know, some people may have had it worse than others, but I think what you're getting at is the theme of this video is that being naked is actually a really empowering step that I took. If you look, uh, all the people around me are just eating shit, unfortunately, rest in peace, uh, but just with the power of the whitey tidy, I've been able to, uh, you know, live forever. As you can see here, I want to give you a demonstration. I have 311 damage resistance and uh, 300 energy resistance. Um, and I don't have a full team. If I have another teammate join, I'll get 12 more of each of those from the bodyguards. The food buffs that I'm running right here, I just showed on the screen. Uh, and then if I take a Live and Love 3, it'll buff those even more. So Herbivore and Live and Love 3. Uh, and oh, we got a fourth teammate. Hell yeah. So as you can see, energy resistance from the Glowing Fungus Puree is a million. If you look at our stats now, oh, damage resistance 56, uh, 7 endurance from Silt Bean Soup. Um, and let's take a healing factor so that our psycho buff will get the maximum amount. And now we have 611 HP, and I want to also add the tato salad is huge max HP. And, um, at night we're going to get 40 more HP, so we'll have 651 HP at night. And 379 damage and 449 energy resistance, I think that's pretty fucking powerful considering the fact that we're naked right now. And so, yeah, these four really are what you're going to be running. And then with Livinov 3 
and the power of, of God inside you. And of course, uh, company T for the AP regen, as I mentioned before, because we don't have the power. One thing I was curious about is how would I survive in a nuke zone without armor? So I just ate a bunch of rad shield. Uh, this stuff still stacks. Um, it doesn't show in your pit boy that's stacking. Um, and like any other, uh, any other ar armor and resistance, you get diminishing returns because it's a percentage based uh, calculation. So there's not like a flat rate that you can get. It scales to how much you're taking. So as you can see, I'm taking eight uh, rads a second, take another one, I'm taking seven rads a second, take another one. And, and what I wanna do is get this down below six rads a second because um, my what rads perk is healing six rads per second. So if I can take less than that, uh, restored six rads per second. So if I can take less than that, then theoretically my health should be fine. It should stay at 100%. So I took, I think I went back and looked to see exactly how many I took, and I think I took about 12 rad shield uh, to get that amount. But that's not bad if you consider the fact that I'm fully naked in a nuke zone and just walking around. Like, I don't think that's bad at all. And honestly, you don't even need to stack this, uh, this uh, rad shield um, because even as long as you don't mind taking a bunch of rad away over and over, you're you're all, you're really only getting about ten rads a second, which is completely survivable. It's not like it's ha it's like going so fast that you can't keep on top of it. Uh, but I wanted to see you know if I could get to a point where I wouldn't need to take any rads at, uh, any right away at all to survive. Of course, um, these guys are all uh, flubbing around over here, um, so I wanted to wipe those out. But one thing that you may uh, uh, be saying to yourself is, why don't you just do the old power armor trick where like you get into the power armor at the edge and get out first of all uh this that's armor and i'm naked you know i'm not gonna use armor because that's cheating but also um you know that feels kind of cheap and cheeky and cheating uh to me because uh, it's clearly unintended and uh you're basically getting the the buffs of power armor without being in it, uh, as far as the rad resistance goes. And, ra and power armor gives you a hidden rad resist that you don't see. Um, but uh, the reason why I wouldn't count stacking rad shield in that same category, even though it's probably unintended how that works, like I have 4,250 rad uh, resistance right now. Um, and that's that's because I still have to make the rad shield, right? Like it's not just I'm I'm not just like spamming something that I have infinite amounts of. Uh, Rad shield isn't cheap to make, and so taking 12 just to go into a nuke zone is, in my opinion, not really an exploit at that point. Like it's it's not really a good. It's a it's a tr I I think it's like an even trade off. And of course with chem fiend, that's lasting twice as long. I think they last about 10 minutes, so you get about 20 minutes of rad shield. Uh, so you know. In my opinion, that's not really uh, on the same category as the the cheesy power armor trick. Um, but to each their own, if you think this is cheesy as well, obviously. Uh, no one's sneaking into your house and strapping you down and making you do this. Uh, so that's the cool thing about having free will. That's something that I've actually noticed uh, some people don't realize they have. So you do have free will and you don't have to do everything just because someone says to in a video. And you also, and hear me out, don't need to watch a video when you're offended by the things that people say in it. You also don't need to comment on it. You can comment on it and tell them because I'm sure that they would love to hear about it. So if you are offended by this video, please let me know in the comments uh, what exactly I did that really put a hole in your bagel. And uh, I, will, I will certainly get back to you about that. Uh, but that's pretty much like the joy that I found in the nuke zone was not bad at all. And I think that uh, I was able to really survive like a really big, big man. Also, I did mention earlier, you get more HP at night because of that uh, perk I have. So we have 651 HP with all our food buffs and it being night, which is a ridiculous amount of HP. Like that's going to make you so tanky because while you do have diminishing returns on armor after a point, uh, that's not the case with HP. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed it, please let me know. Uh, like the video and subscribe if you're not. And uh, I will see you guys in the next video.